you can see I'm not pressing up at all. So why is it registering as a jump? Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you know, I'm a big fan of Nintendo Switch, but I am not a big fan of playing a lot of games using this this specific controller. It's got buttons instead of a regular D-pad like you might remember on previous Nintendo consoles. You can take it off and you can play two-player. You flip them sideways and you've both got D-pads and buttons, right? Oh no, actually, yes, you've both got analog stick and buttons. Anyway, the, the point I'm trying to say is I prefer this D-pad on here. The thing is, the only D-pads, D-pads, the only D-pads I have available to me on the Nintendo Switch are either this GameCube controller, this, which is actually made by a company called Hori, but it's quite cheap. This is a 30-ish dollar controller. The thing about it is that when you're holding down right or left, then if you slightly push down or up on it, it, it can actually register as a diagonal instead of only right. This one is quite flexible in that you can take this off so that you're left with these buttons inside here. It means that the D-pad doesn't actually feel that nice. The other option is to just take the Joy-Cons off the Switch and put it into this little Joy-Con holder. You've still got the issue where you've got these discrete buttons rather than up, down, left, right. And you know, for certain games, it just feels better to have a D-pad where you can roll your thumb from right to left to up to down, all the different directions. There are plenty of games where it works quite well, actually. Tetris, it's really nice to have discrete directions where you're not accidentally pressing diagonal or anything. What I'm trying to say is that I finally bought a Pro Controller. I already own all this stuff where, you know, for basically, the Switch already comes with controllers, so why spend more money on other controllers when I've already got so many. Like, I can already play with the red and blue Joy-Cons on here, or this Game Com Co GameCube controller, which I have multiple, I have two of these. I was getting sick and tired of not being able to play certain games. For example, I was streaming Mega Man X when the Mega Man X collection came out on the Switch, and I kept bumping into this stick here. On Mega Man X, you have to do some gymnastics with your right thumb, where you're holding down charge, jumping, and then sometimes jumping and pressing dash at the same time. So you're pressing like all three of these buttons at the same time so you can do like big speed jumps and then I would always bump into this analog stick and it would throw me off. <sighs> I don't have a good excuse. I just wanted to buy one of these. Let's unbox the Nintendo Switch official Pro Controller. I actually don't know how it feels at all. I've never used one in my life. No one I know actually owns one of these. The original Pro Controller doesn't have the, the green and the pink on the sides here. This is the Splatoon 2 edition of the controller. This is the box. It's red on top gray on the bottom. I need a controller that feels nice and I'm hoping that this feels nice. If it doesn't feel nice, I'll just have to return it. This is a USB-A to USB-C cable. You can plug this end into your Nintendo Switch dock and this USB-C cable into the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But this is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Ta-da! We don't need that. Well, that's... Uh, check it out. The official Splatoon 2 edition of the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, in fact, there's nothing new about this. Splatoon, <laughs> Splatoon, Splatoon came out like a year and a half ago, so it's not like a brand new game or anything. I just didn't have a Pro Controller and I wanted the colorful one. I think it looks bloody wonderful. Now, actually, I wasn't even aware that there was Splatoon design on the middle part of it as well. I never really looked that closely at it. You've got all the splatter designs here on the front, plus obviously the Switch logo. Green on this side, pink on this side, and it looks like even on the back of the controller, it still has the splatter designs there on the back as well. Oh no, it is! It's actually translucent. I couldn't really tell looking closely at it, but it's actually a dark black translucent plastic and you can actually, you can actually see inside it. It's got the activity lights on the bottom so you know which player you are registered as, player one, two, three, or four. All the buttons that you would expect on a normal Joy-Con controller for the Switch. You've got the left analog stick, right analog stick, the D-pad, ooh! Ooh, that feels way nicer than I was expecting. Maybe it'll feel different when I'm actually playing games, but right now, the D-pad, can you hear it? Feels nice and clicky. You've got the regular Y, X, B, A buttons. You've got the home button here in the middle, the share button there on the left, plus and minus, all in exactly the right places. Ah, uh, <laughs> one thing I'm not too keen on, why is the home button and the plus button right next to the Y and the X button? Like, I really would prefer if it had been somewhere here in the middle. I do feel like if you get kind of excited, you could end up accidentally pausing the game with the home button that close to the Y button, but Hopefully that won't happen. On the front, trigger buttons, R, L, ZR, ZL, 
Yeah, this is gonna be good. So there you have it, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. This cost me something like $70. Let's plug it into the Nintendo Switch and let's see how it feels. All right, so I've got the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller here, the green and pink Pro Controller for Nintendo Switch. But as you can see, nothing's happening because it's not actually plugged in yet. I don't actually know how to sync it up. To pair controllers wirelessly, close this screen and select change grip order. This is very exciting. Whoa, there it is! Sick! All right, I did want to show you Mega Man X, but apparently I forgot to actually download it. So let's try a bit of Street Fighter first. Let's try a bit of Sakura, shall we? If I can remember how to use it. The first thing I like is compared to the Hori Pro Controller. Well, it's not really a Pro Controller, though. Compared to the Hori, the Hori Pad, as they call it. As you can see, even just pressing sideways like this, it just feels like it's wiggling up and down. But on the Nintendo Pro Controller, it's very digital. Oh, I am... <laughs> Ah, no, maybe I spoke too soon. I am jumping, I am jumping by accident. Fireballs are okay. Ah, uh, you know what? That's really weird. If you press lightly, she doesn't jump. But if you press hard, the harder you press, the more likely is she, is, she is to accidentally jump. That's a shame. I think, I think you do have to press it quite lightly to, to maintain control. I think I can get used to it. Okay. I take it back. It's not that easy to use. I think, well, obviously I need to give it some time to get used to it, but <laughs> I'm actually finding it really difficult to use. Let's try pressing really lightly. Basically, I can't get three in a row. <laughs> not on day one. I'm really curious to, to hear how you guys have feel about the the, the D-pad on this Pro Controller. It's not very pro to, in my opinion. She just jumps way too easily. By accident. Accidental jumps. I'm literally only pressing right and I'm getting jumped. Oh, it's the worst. No. No. Look at this. Literally, even if I use my right thumb, you can see I'm not pressing up at all. So why is it registering as a jump? I'm trying to see if I have any be better luck on the right side. I can't, I literally cannot do it. <gasps> okay, I got it. Okay, well, I can do it if I try really, really hard, but I'm gonna be quite honest, I don't like this D-pad. <laughs> oh, why am I so picky? I'm, it's so difficult to find a D-pad that I like. I think I'm gonna have to keep the search going. I'm gonna have to try some of the other Hori pads. I know that Hori has a pro controller as well. I've seen some other brands like A-Class as well. But I'm gonna be honest, first impressions are not not great for this D-pad, which is weird because before I plugged it in, I I, I was I had high hopes for it. I feel like I could get used to it, but this isn't. It's just not ideal. It's almost like it's too stiff now. I quite liked that it was clicky at first, but now now I'm it's, now I'm actually thinking like, you know what? It's a little bit too stiff. Well, anyway, this is all first impressions only. I am open to the idea that I may like this controller more in the future, but right now I'm feeling like it's just it feels a little bit stiff and. It also does accidentally jump. Nah, I want to be able to just press the, the left direction and not register it uh, as up. Maybe I just need to get used to it. Who knows? I'll tell you what does feel nice though, is these buttons. The action buttons themselves. These punch, kicks, Y, X, B, A, they feel great. Absolutely no issue with that. I'll tell you what though, I, I wouldn't play, I wouldn't play Project Diva with this. When Project Diva comes out for Switch, I'll definitely be playing on the original Joy-Con, especially because it's just, this is perfect for Project Diva because it's got discrete buttons rather than a D-pad lay layout. So actually, it's gonna be better to play on the original Joy-Cons for that. I don't, I don't think I've ever had this much trouble doing DP on, on pad before. Now just for kicks, I wanna also feel how the arcade stick, the arcade stick, the analog stick feels. So I'm gonna play a little bit of Smash, Super Smash Ultimate Brothers. Now I'm no expert at this game, I know, but I do know how to run around in it. Let's use the new, char the new character since we've got a new character. So originally I actually played this game with the GameCube controller, so I know how this feels. The nice thing about the GameCube controller is you've got the clickiness of an arcade stick, but the analogness of an analog stick, plus these giant, <laughs> these giant buttons over here. Conversely, on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, you don't have the clickiness, so I'm gonna have to get used to that. And also that the jump button is now in a different place. 
because as you can see on the GameCube controller, the Y and the X buttons kind of surround the A button, so it's really easy to press them from various different angles like so. But on this controller, I'm actually, a it's a little bit more difficult to access the A button from the Y button. Instant air attack. Looks like you're gonna have to do that with X only. You won't be able to do it with Y, because if you tried to, you'd have to put your hand in a weird shape like this. So I'm not buying this to replace my GameCube controller, but I just I just wanted something with a nice D-pad. Anyway, since I've got the Pro Controller though, let's just see how it feels. Totally fine. It's a little bit loose, I suppose. But maybe that's, maybe that's good. Ah, the buttons are a little bit different now. My R button, usually the R button is the big button here. On the GameCube controller, the R button's the big one, and the ZR button is actually the small one on top, and it's, re it's reversed on the Pro Controller. You've actually got ZR is the big f flippy button. I, I could change it in the settings if I wanted, and the original R button is the smaller one. I think it should be no problem playing Smash with this controller. I, I, never, I never use the D-pad part anyway. <laughs> what is this? This is my, my taunt. I've never, I've never used those buttons. So neither of these analog sticks are clicky, whereas on the GameCube you've got very specific clicks for the eight different directions. And same with the C stick. So you kind of know which one you've clicked because it locks in place. But when you, press, when you play Smash on this, you're using a regular analog stick. And so you just have, it just, does, it just doesn't feel quite, obviously, if you're a pro, you'll, you'll just get used to it. For a casual player like myself, it's a little bit strange at first to have my, these tilt attacks a little more difficult. All right, well, there you have it. This is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. I'm gonna be honest, I love the way that it feels in the hand. I think it feels nice. I think the analog sticks work just fine. It's the D-pad that I'm not too keen on, before turning on this controller, it feels nice and clicky like this is exactly what you'd want. But the responsiveness is completely different when you're actually in-game using this as the controller because it's, it's really hard, it really hurts you, it's got really hard edges on here, so I really feel it digging into my thumb. But in addition, when playing games like Street Fighter, when you've got something like the Dragon Punch motion, which is forward, down, down, forward, I don't know, I just couldn't do it without accidentally jumping because by giving it a fast, quick flick, it was accidentally pressing jump, which I thought was just a problem of the Hori, which is which is this. This is just the. It's called the Hori pad. I just thought it was an issue of the Hori pad where I would accidentally press jump forward. But but really, it's not just this controller. It's it's this one as well. So that's a bit of a shame. It looks like the main the main reason I wanted a pro controller was to have a better a better D-pad, but really this has not done it. I am gonna have to keep searching for the ultimate D-pad on on a on a pro controller, but I'd like to know if you've got any suggestions, so let me know in the comments below. I'm not a big fan of the D-pad on it so far. Who knows, maybe I'll get used to it. Maybe you'll see me playing on stream. I'll update my opinions there, but for now, first impressions are it's not really working out for me. But I will give it another try over the next few weeks, and hopefully I'll get a chance to buy other controllers and compare them, and finally find a D-pad that doesn't suck, because look, 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 just look at these controllers. GameCube, terrible D-pad. <gasps> Hori pad, terrible D-pad. It's not even a dedicated D-pad, it's just like a convenience D-pad. The Joy-Con, it's not even a D-pad, it's these discrete buttons. And the Hori D-pad, which you can actually buy and slide onto the Switch. That's not actually wireless, so that's not an option either. And this thing that I've just purchased, it... I don't know, I'm not really into it. Apart from that, I like everything else about it. The buttons feel nice and responsive. Analog sticks feel, they work well. I'm not too keen on the placement of the home button and the plus button here, but what can you do? It's just the D-pad, it's just the D-pad. It's always the D-pad. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share links and all that great stuff. And I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream and come and hang out on the Discord if you want to chat about gear and or fighting games or EVO or any of the other games that we talk about on the Discord. I'll see you next time.